there. Let's see what she does. You're right near the mouth of the shell. She's looking at it. She just picked it up. Maybe the female has kicked them out. I don't know. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're gonna be continuing on from last week's video and having a look at the progress of the black Alto Lamprologus calvus fry. So let's get straight into this week's video. The other day I noticed that one of the fried exited the shell and was pretty much at the water surface, just like with its head, looked like its head was stuck to the water surface. And I'd try and encourage it back down into the water column and was hoping that the female would pick up the baby and pop the fry back in its shell. And that never happened. And then a day or two later I noticed another one and then three and then four and now I've just noticed this. When I noticed that one fry in the tank that was at the water surface I decided to turn the flow off to this tank and just rely on the sponge filter. So this aquarium is shut off from the sump at the moment. Water isn't flowing in from the other tanks and then going down to the sump because I turned the ball valve off so water wouldn't flow into the aquarium. And just basically because I didn't want that one little fry getting uh, getting stuck to the overflow. It's very lucky I did that because there seems to be about a hundred fry all hovering around that bulkhead. Now they can't go over the bulkhead and into, into the sump because the attachment on the bulkhead uh, blocks them off from going in and over. And there's, as I said, there's no water coming into the aquarium, so there's no way they can go through. To the bulk, uh, through the bulkhead and down to the sump. I'm just assuming now they're all out of the shell and uh, around the bulkhead, but I'm gonna leave her in the tank for a couple more days just because her instinct is, is so strong to defend those fry. Uh, I don't believe she would attack them. Um, but yeah, so I'm just gonna leave her in the tank with the, with the, with the fry for now. Um, and then when I think the fry will become properly free swimming in a day or two. They've still got their yolk sac attached to their abdomen, so they're not properly free swimming and that's why they're still like basically almost floating on the water surface it's really unusual and i thought i'd film this just to show you guys there you go you can see some of them moving around swimming around and that's all fry now why won't this focus there you go that's all fry just congregating around the edges of that bulkhead of course they have to be around the edges of the bulkhead why <laughs> why would they be anywhere else in this aquarium uh, so there are some others that are, you know, in the other corner. Very hard to see on this mobile phone camera, but it's just easier to film with the mobile phone camera up this high in the fish room. I'm just surprised that they're all exited the shell. Maybe the female has kicked them out, I don't know. Her instinct to protect this shell is quite strong, so maybe I should take her out. But I believe uh, it will be fine for another day or two with her in this aquarium. And those fry that are there should be okay. And again, we've got this black plastic uh, dividers, so she can't see the Leilupi on one side and uh, the other fish on the other side. The, the Lamprologus is lightest gold, and Ventralis fry. So she's been quite peaceful. Her lip has been healing, thankfully, from the fights. And that is like look at that. And that is the other reason why I don't want her to put her back in the other aquarium. Uh, for her safety and the other fish safety. I don't want them to you know be stressed and start fighting again. Uh, when I reintroduce this girl back into uh, her, her aquarium I'm not going to uh, put that shell back in straight away. I, 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 she just associates that shell to her fry too much uh, so I won't be putting the shell back into this aquarium. Uh, I might even just do another reaquascape of this just to mix the territories up again and let her settle in that way. She just associates that shell so much with her fry. Uh, so uh, only when I want to spawn them, I'll pop that shell back in. And a couple of you guys have been asking where I get these shells, what shells are they? So uh, they're called ton shells, T-O-N. Uh, and yeah, they're great for calvus. Obviously that large opening, uh, they're pretty hard for them to get stuck in this shell, I believe. I and mean, if it was a narrower opening, they could possibly get stuck in it. Uh, and I got them through my local cichlid club. So uh, you can find them on eBay or uh, online stores that shell. That's really hard to say. Online stores that sell shells. <laughs> so um, yeah, ton shells, look them up. You better find some, they come in different sizes. And you can see this, the opening on the shell's about oh, seven or eight centimeters. Okay guys, 24 hours later, 
and the females as they grow as ever. You can see there's some fry underneath the shell. Uh, she's protecting this area, but I don't think she's necessarily protecting the fry. And the reason being, we've still got fry up near that bulkhead. There's some fry still hugging the surface of the water. See there's a fry there sitting around. But the majority is still up at the, the back there. So you can see hugging that bulkhead. Now she's just seen a fry hovering around her. She isn't going to eat it. There's one right near her mouth there. Let's see what she does. You're right near the mouth of the shell. She's looking at it. She just picked it up and I can guarantee you she spat it out in the shell. So her instinct still is to defend her fry, that's good to see. She could have easily eaten it, and if she ate it, she wouldn't have popped her head back into the shell. So she, her instincts are still there to look after her fry, which is good. Because what I was considering doing was taking her out and putting her back in the tank with the other calvus or possibly another aquarium, just to let her heal her lip a little bit further. So I might leave her in here for another 24 hours and take her out tomorrow. So it's going well. So it's been a number of days now and I've finally plugged this tank back in to the system so fresh water is flowing in and from the sump you see the fry at the back of the tank all congregating there in that bottom right corner. There are some around the tops of the tank and a couple on this side too you can see near the bead of silicon running up the right hand side of the tank. The numbers have really decreased with the amount of fry that are congregating around the bulkhead and around the inline tap. So that's a really good sign. And uh, they're generally sitting on the bottom of the tank now um, in a large group and are free swimming now. So I have been feeding this tank uh, baby brine shrimp and live microworms and they've been uh, doing fine on those. And you can see there's some uneaten food in here that I'm gonna have to take out. That's from the, the female. Uh, she didn't eat that food and as you can see I've also taken her out now she really wasn't showing any signs of aggression towards the fry however all the fry were far away from her shell which was here and that indicated to me she's not really uh, doing any adding anything further to uh, the survival rate of her fry uh, and in fact I expected that uh, if the fry tried to come near her shell uh, she would start to attack them because that's just her instinct is that it's so strong uh, to protect that shell that she just uh, that it, it overrides her uh, parental instincts to protect her fry uh, so she ends up just protecting the area around the shell and the shell itself uh, so and it was time basically to take her out she had been in this tank for about five or six days now and I've just taken her out and I'll show you where she is what my lay loopy <laughs> my lay loopy breeding pair but uh, she's in the old Lamprolocus ocellatus gold tank. Uh, this is where I had my breeding trio and uh, fry growing out. Uh, I've put her in here with the shell by herself so she can recuperate. Uh, she's had a very stressful uh, time raising those fry, uh, defending them when she was in the tank with the other black calvus. Her top lip got torn off basically in some of those fights and I'm letting her heal up in here. Now as this method is different to how I normally raise my white Alto Lamprologus calvus, with my white Alto Lamprologus calvus I catch out all the fry from the parent's tank and move them into a grow out tank. With this, because the situation is different with the black calvus, there's four calvus in the one tank. Uh, in my white calvus tank I just have the two, the breeding pair, and they don't uh, act aggressive towards each other. With four Alto Lamprologus calvus in the one tank, they're very aggressive when it comes to spawning time and protecting their fry, so I have to do something different. Um, with, with the black calvus I remove the shell, with the white calvus I just remove the fry. So obviously it's easier just to remove the shell uh, from the tank and pop it into a grow out tank because the fry, you don't have to catch them all, hundreds of fry, and, and move them up into their grow out tank. Uh, with the white calvus I have to do that, I have to catch each individual fry and move them into a grow out tank. However there are advantages and disadvantages to both approaches. The advantage of removing the fry from the breeding pair's tank into a grow-out tank. Uh, yes, it is uh, time-consuming, an hour, hour or two to catch all the fry because you've got to be very delicate with them. 
and uh, you are moving them to another tank when they're very young which which could be stressful to those fry but you're not going to be breaking the bond between your breeding pair uh, and reintroducing the female back into the tank if she was to go into the shell with her fry uh, could be a dangerous matter when you're reintroducing the, the female back to her bonded male uh, he might not recognize her and they could fight and he could potentially kill her so with the black calvus i've done the opposite i have removed the female from the main tank uh, purely because of the aggression uh, so i thought it was best for her safety to move her to another tank and for the other fish obviously because she was tearing shreds off the other three fish in that aquarium as well move her with the shell with the fry into a grout into the into the grout tank and there you can see she's just come out of the shell for the first time since i've put her in this tank so with the black calvus i moved her with the shell and the fry out simply got the shell moved it into the grout tank and happy days didn't have to catch any fry because they were all in the shell already and then over the coming days the fry start to come out of the shell uh, and the mother recuperated in the fry go out tank with her babies but then there comes a point where you need to remove the female because the, the, she's going to start attacking her fry and that day has come which, which i've done but it's here now uh, the advantages of this process start to get a little bit risky when you are going to reintroduce her back to her uh, tank with the other three calvus. Uh, they might not recognize her, she might still be aggressive towards them, and all the recuperation a couple of weeks away from her main tank spent healing could be undone within a matter of hours. So uh, moving the fry out from the parent's tank and into their own grow out tank um, has its advantages and disadvantages. Advantages being, uh, you know, you, you don't have to reintroduce your bonded female to the bonded male. Uh, you don't have the risk of their breaking their, them breaking their bond. The disadvantages of that are you are potentially stressing out the, the fry, moving them from one tank to another at such a young age. And it is time consuming to catch all those fry, one to two hours. However, it's worked for me uh, with my white tail Lamprologus calvus. Now with the black calvus, the advantages of moving the shell, obviously with the female, uh, you're catching hundreds of fry in one go, moving them into the tank. It takes all of about 30 seconds to do that. And she's raising the fry and she's not as stressed because she's with her fry. And in that time, because of the aggressiveness uh, during, during the, the, the breeding, uh, the few days after the breeding process um, with her other calvus uh, tank mates, she's been able to recover in the grow out tank with the fry, be with her fry for a number of days, not feel as stressed. However, now the risky part, the disadvantage of that whole process comes into play when I try to reintroduce her into this aquarium. So when I do introduce her back into this aquarium, I'm not gonna have the shell with her. I don't want her to have the shell near her uh, until I'm ready to spawn them again because she just associates that shell with fry so much and uh, be, will be very, very aggressive. The other thing I'm going to do when I reintroduce her back into this tank is re aquascape it. I want to break up these territories that are formed uh, and just to reset every all the territories again uh, the day I introduce her into the tank. So just to make sure um, she isn't harmed in any way after she goes through her rehab. So she's coming out of the shell anyway and uh, she'll get used to this aquarium for a number of days. Let her, let her continue to heal. Her lip is, is healing a little bit. Uh, See, she's got a little bump on her nose, and I've been monitoring that to make sure it doesn't become infected, but uh, so far, so good. So, she is getting better. In a number of weeks, uh, one or two potentially, I'll reassess how she's going, and then I may pop her back into this aquarium without the shell, just to be sure that she, uh, just to minimize the aggression as much as possible. But anyway, you know, so, the fry are doing well. Uh, I've just plugged the, the tank back into the system, so they're getting fresh water from the sump, which is good. They hadn't had that for about almost a week, and uh, I'm really pleased that I'm able to plug them back into the system and not have any fry get stuck <laughs> to the bulkhead. And uh, so the flow is really turned down low in this um, for the fry not to get blown around, but it is enough to give them fresh water from the sump. So happy days. So there you have it guys, the second time I spawned my black Alto Lamprologus calvus. And like the first time, I was once again surprised by it, just how quickly they had spawned once I put them back into the aquarium. Anyway guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, comment, and consider subscribing to the channel. I really would appreciate it. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.